Hello there and welcome to the June 2019 paper here we're on question 9. So a researcher is testing the effectiveness of a braking system of a car when it's driven in wet conditions. The engineer measures and records the braking distance d when the brakes are applied from a speed of v kilometers per hour. Graphs of d against v and log base 10 d against log base 10 of v were plotted below. Explain how figure 6 would lead the engineer to believe that the braking distance should be modelled with the formula d equals k times v to the power of n, with k approximately equal to 0 0.017. So, let's give this question a go then. So, figure 6 is a straight line. So, because as figure 6 is a straight line, is a straight line, it can be modelled with a straight with a, with y equals mx plus c. But on the graph, it's not um, it's not y and x. It's log base ten of d and log base ten of v that is y and x. So I could actually write this as log base ten of d equals m times x, which is log base 10 of v, in fact I didn't need the bracket there, uh, plus c. And actually in this graph here we have the plus c, it's minus, minus 1.77. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to rearrange this and show that it equals this expression here. So what I think I'll do is I'll move the log in, move the m into this logarithm here as a multiple, but it's going to go in as a power. So it's going to be log base 10 of d equals log base 10 of v to the power of m. Um, and that's minus 1.77. Now I just need to rearrange this a little bit more. If I move all the logs onto the same side and subtract them, uh, if I subtract the logs, what's going to happen inside the brackets here is it's going to divide. So it'd be V divided by M equals minus 1.77. Now to get rid of the log, I'm going to do 10 to the power of both sides. 10 to the power of the left-hand side will just cancel it out. So D equals D, um, o, D divided by V power of m equals 10 to the power of minus 1.77 and let's do it 10 to the power of minus 1.77 and that should give you 0 0.017 0 0.017 and then we'll divide the so we'll times the v to the power of m back onto the right hand side so it's going to be d equals 0 0.017 v to the power of m but it's got n here so we'll just we'll just scribble out all the n m's that we've ever written and put n's there instead it doesn't really matter what letter they're using for the effectively what was the gradient there we'll just call it n Okay, so there we are. We've replaced all our M's for N's, and there we are. That's our final answer. Okay, so we're going to take this forward now into part B. Oh, it's bit. So we'll move it into part B now. So using the information given that figure 5 equals where K is equal to 0 0.017. So don't use your answer button that's on your calculator anymore. Just use K equals 0 0.017 now. So... Find a, a complete equation for the model giving n to three significant figures. Okay, so I expect what they want you to now use is this 30, 20 um, coordinates. So when d equals, actually no, v is the x-axis, isn't it? So d will be 20. v equals 30. So it's going to be 20. This is for part b. 20 equals 0 0.017 times 30 to the power of n. So now, first of all, we'll divide by 0 0.017. So 20 divided by 0 0.017. Again, don't use the answer that's in your calculator. Just use the 0 0.017 because it says up here. So that's going to be 1176 approximately equals 30 to the power of n. And now what we need to do is we need to do a log base 30 log 
base 30 to both sides. So log base 30, there's the button on your calculator to do that. Log with a base of 30 of the answer button equals 2.07. So 2.07. So three significant figures uh, would actually be 2.08 is the value for n. Okay, so there we are, that's the answer. So we'll find, complete the equation. So therefore, completing the equation, d equals 0.017 v to the power of 2.08. Okay, so moving on to the next part. So um, uh, Sean is driving a car at 60 kilometers per hour in wet conditions when he notices a large puddle in the middle of the road 100 meters ahead. It takes him 0.8 seconds to react before he applies the brakes. Use the formula to find if Sean will be able to stop before reaching the puddle. So let me just remind myself, V is the speed. Okie doke. So V in this question is going to equal 60. And if he's driving at 0 0.8 seconds, if it takes him that far, then he's going to have used up some of that distance in that 0 0.8 seconds. So doing a quick distance equals velocity times time, um, it's going to be 60 times 0 0.8 um, seconds. Well, actually, this is in kilometers per hour, isn't it? So, um, so it's going to be seconds, and then divide that by 60 times 60. Um, to make it into hours, so it's going to be 0 0.8 divided by 60, which uh, that would be 1 over 75, but that would be 1 over 75 kilometers. So now when I convert that into meters, it's going to be 1 over 75 times a thousand for kilometers, so times a thousand, and that's going to be 13.3 meters. 30.3 recurring meters. So in that thinking time, he's already used up, Sean, this is 13.3 uh, meters. So what distance do we have left? We have a distance of 100 minus answer. Well, exactly, it's going to be 260 over 3, or in other words, 86.7 km, meters left. Okay, so let's now work out the distance, the breaking distance using this formula. Um, so it's going to be d equals um, 0 0.017 times the speed of 60 to the power of 2.08. And let's see if that's bigger or less than 86.7. So I'll type this into my calculator, 0 0.017 times 60 to the power of 2.08. And that gives him 84.9. And that will be the breaking distance. And he had 86.7 meters left. So yes, Sean will stop in time. Sean will stop. And we could even work out how far he would be away from the pothole. So it would be a 260 over 3 minus answer by 1.75 meters by 1.75 meters from the pothole so there we are that's the answer for question nine there so a nice exponential modeling question there let's now move on to question 10